Good day class, please be quiet. My name is Christian J. Galvez, your first teacher for today's lesson. Stand up everyone. Let's bow our head in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Then if I am sent by the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our right, class, sit down, please. Checking of attendance. Our right, class, I will give you an attendance sheet, and I want you to write your name and signature, and that will serve as your attendance for today. Okay. I right, review on the previous lesson class. What was our lesson yesterday class? Yes. Yes, very good. Because we need to know that education programs aim to increase people's awareness of the risks associated with specific drugs when it comes to illicit drugs or non-medical use of pharmaceutical medications. This can include short-term risks such as overdose or long-term issues associated with dependence. It may also include risks associated with particular ways of using drugs such as injecting. Next question is, what is drug addiction? Yes. Exactly. Drug addiction is when you can stop taking the drugs even if you want to. The drugs urge is too much to control even if you know the drugs is causing harm. Addiction can become more important than the need to eat or sleep. The urge to get and use the drugs can fill every moment of your life. Um, the addiction replaces all things used to enjoy. Okay class, before we proceed to our next topic, I will show you a video presentation about drugs to be able to know more about drugs and awareness. Today's topic is drug abuse. Drug abuse, also called substance abuse, is an illness that is characterized by a destructive patterned use of illegal or legal drugs or medication. The condition affects the person's brain and behavior, such that they are unable to control the use of the drug, to the point that it interferes with their ability to function. The drug user consumes the substance in amounts or with methods that are harmful to themselves or others. Some of the most commonly used drugs are alcohol, cocaine, opioids, benzodiazepines, cannabis, barbiturates, amphetamine, hallucinogens, inhalants, club drugs, and other substances. There are over 190 million drug users around the world, and the problem keeps increasing at an alarming rate, especially among young adults under the age of 30. Drug abuse can cause long-term damage to the body, Drug addicts who use needles are at a greater risk of having HIV and hepatitis B and C infections. People start to use drugs for so many reasons. Some people start with the experimental use of recreational drugs out of curiosity, to have a good time, or because friends are doing it. For others, drug abuse begins with exposure to prescribed medications from a friend or relative who has been prescribed the medications, particularly with opioids. Over time, you may need larger doses of the drug to get high, and as drug use increases, it may get extremely difficult to go without the drug. An attempt to stop the drug may cause intense cravings as well as getting physically ill. In 2015, substance use disorder resulted in 307,400 deaths. Highest numbers are from alcohol use disorders, around 137,500. Opioids use disorder, has 122,100 deaths. Cocaine use disorders has 11,100 deaths, and amphetamine use disorder has 12,200 deaths. Causes. Each drug produces different physical effects on the brain. However, repeated use of a drug can alter the way in which the brain functions, including the way the brain feels pleasure. The addicting drug use causes changes in your brain that interferes with the ability to think control your behavior, and at the same time, send intense impulses to take drugs. It is because of this change in the brain 
then it is so challenging for an addicted person to stop taking drugs. Like many mental disorders, drug abuse has no single cause. Many factors may contribute to the development of drug addiction. The main factors are genetics, environmental factors, such as parental abuse or neglect, family beliefs, exposure to peer groups that encourages drug abuse, other factors that may affect the likelihood and speed of developing a substance addiction may include psychological problems such as depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, as well as personality disorders. Peer pressure, early use of drugs, unstable home environment, poor relationship with parents, inadequate supervision over adolescence activities, poor achievement in school. Symptoms. A regular urge to use drugs daily or even several times a day. Recurrent substance use that prevents the user from meeting significant daily responsibilities at work, home, or school. Recurrent drug use in physically dangerous situations. Withdrawal symptoms at every attempt to stop drug use. An unsuccessful trial of decreasing or controlling the use of the drug. Cutting back on social or recreational activities because of drug use. Continual use of the drug, even though the person is aware of recurring physical or psychological problems caused or worsened by drug use. A need to keep or maintain a supply of the drug. Spending more money on the drug, even though one can't afford it. Doing things you wouldn't do, such as going to the extent of stealing to get the drug. Diagnosis and treatment. A thorough evaluation that includes an assessment by a psychiatrist, psychologist, or licensed alcohol and drug counselor may be required for diagnosis. Blood, urine, or other lab tests are used in assessing drug use, but they do not serve as a diagnostic test for substance abuse. Treatment. With the right treatment and support, it is possible to counteract the disruptive effect of drug use and regain control of your life. The primary goals of treatment are abstinence, relapse prevention, and rehabilitation. Treatment options may include chemical dependence treatment programs, detoxification, behavioral therapy, support from friends, family, doctor support groups, or an organized treatment program may help to overcome your drug addiction and stay drug free. Okay, based on the video, what do you notice on the video presentation? Anyone? Yes. Yes, very good. Drugs have different effect depending on the drugs itself. The person taking it and their surroundings learn how your body processes drugs and about the short-term and long-term effect taking drugs can affect not just your physical and mental health but your whole life just one pill can kill. Next question is do you think illegal drugs will benefit in our mental health? Anyone? Please? Yes, very good. We need to know that drugs addiction can cause many long-term negative consequences including physical health problems like liver damage and heart disease as well as uh, mental illnesses like depression and anxiety disorders. Hi students! I am Jello and I am the one who will discuss to all of you the first and second of six classification of drugs abuse. So first is gateway drugs. Gateway drugs are legal that none drug user may try, which can lead to him or her more dangerous drugs such as marijuana and shabu. Teenagers who engage in early smoking and drinking have a higher chance of using and experimenting dangerous drugs because it boosts dopamine level which increases pressure. The dopamine boost can cause the gateway drugs during adolescence makes the brain release less dopamine during adulthood. This leads people to seek harder drugs that can cause abusing of illegal drugs. Here I have some example pictures of gateway drugs. Based on the picture I presented to you, 
I have a question about these we drugs. Is energy drink is one of the examples of gateway drugs? Yes or no? Yes, that's right. Because based on a study, teens who consume energy drinks were two to three times more likely to pick up an illicit or illegal drugs. Let's move on to the second and sixth classification of drugs abuse, which is depressant drugs. Depressant drugs are psychoactive drugs that slow down the activity of the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, which reduces a person's alertness and also slow down functions such as breathing and heart rate. This can take the form of pharmaceutical drugs as well as illicit substances. Alcohol is also a widely used depressant drugs. So students, again, I have a question about depressant drugs. Is there any chance a doctor prescribing other depressant drugs? Yes or no? Very good. The answer is yes. A doctor can prescribe other depressant drugs to calm nerves and relax muscles. However, allergic quantities or improperly used doses of depressant drugs can cause confusion, lack of coordination, low blood pressure, and slowed heart rate and breathing. Someone who takes them may have slurred speech and an inability to concentrate, and may fall asleep at work or school. Depressants are addictive and withdrawal symptoms include anxiety, sleeplessness, and seizures. Depressant drugs are very dangerous if taken with alcohol and some other drugs. Today class, I'm Teacher Lane, your third teacher. So today, we were going to talk about stimulant drugs and narcotics. Before that, I have prepared a video presentation about our topic. Please listen carefully because I have an activity later. So let's proceed. So we talked about depressants, which depress neural activity and bodily functions. And on the other hand, we have stimulants, which stimulate or intensify neural activity and bodily functions. And these can range from your everyday stimulants, like caffeine, to more hardcore drugs, like cocaine, amphetamines, methamphetamines, and ecstasy. And in between those extremes are nicotine, which is found in cigarettes. If you've ever tried to stay awake by drinking coffee or soda or something like that, then you know that caffeine adds energy and can disrupt your sleep for several hours. Nicotine actually acts similarly. It increases your heart rate and blood pressure and arouses the brain to a state of heightened alertness. Nicotine also suppresses your appetite, which is one reason that people sometimes gain weight when they quit smoking. Without the nicotine, their appetite returns, so they eat more. And at very high levels, nicotine can actually cause muscles to relax and cause the release of certain neurotransmitters that may reduce stress. And that's your body's natural response to try to counteract all that heightened alertness and tension caused by the nicotine. Both caffeine and nicotine are physiologically addictive, meaning that your body grows accustomed to them and starts to experience negative reactions when you don't get enough. For example, you might know people who drink a lot of coffee every day, or you might be one of those people. And when if you don't get your coffee, think about if you experience any headaches, irritability, difficulty concentrating, even depression. And that's withdrawal symptom from the caffeine and coffee. And nicotine is even more addictive than that. And this is one reason it's so hard to quit smoking. Once the body gets used to nicotine, its absence can lead to withdrawal symptoms like anxiety, insomnia, distractibility, and irritability. And cocaine is an even stronger stimulant. It causes your brain to release so much dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine that it basically depletes your brain's supply. 
Once the drug wears off, you experience this intense crash and become very depressed. Regular cocaine users can experience emotional disturbances, suspicion, uh, convulsions, cardiac arrest, or respiratory failure. Amphetamines and methamphetamines also trigger the release of dopamine, and meth can cause a feeling of euphoria that can last up to eight hours. But after that wears off, people experience, again, intense irritability, insomnia, or even seizures and depression. And meth is highly addictive, and people will literally just devote their lives to getting another fix. Uh, Long-term addicts might even lose the ability to maintain normal levels of dopamine as their brain tries to adjust to the intense highs. Based on that video presentation you've watched, define stimulant drugs. It's either the definition or opinion. Anyone? Yes? Very good! Next question is, when we say stimulant, what does it mean? Yes? Very good! Thank you! So, stimulants are a broad term that refers to a variety of drugs that, that, that enhance central nervous system and body function, as well as drugs that are pleasurable and energizing, or drugs that have sympathomimetic effect. To be shortened, it is drugs that activate the cardiovascular system or speed up a person's central nervous system. It has opposite effect of the presence and makes a person energy side. These are some examples of stimulant drugs. Amphetamines, shabu, caffeine, nicotine, and cocaine. The side effects of stimulant drugs are depression and tiredness. Next topic is narcotics. For you, what is narcotics? Yes? Very good, thank you. So, narcotics is a drug used to treat mild to extreme pain. Narcotics are similar to opiates like morphine and codeine, but they aren't derived from opium. They bind to opioid receptors in the brain and spinal cord. Opioids are the new name for narcotics, or drugs which relieve pain and induce sleepiness. These are prescribed to patients with mental disorders or with patients with dealing with severe pain like cancer, but illicit and dangerous if taken. Cocaine, heroin, and marijuana are the example of narcotics. That's all. Thank you for your cooperation and proceed to the next topic. Good day, class. My name is Ludivino Yu, your fourth teacher. Fifth is hallucinogens. Drugs which distort reality and facts. Affects all senses, make a user feel here, see things that don't exist in the time being. Came from the word hallucinate to perceive illusions. Examples are lysergic acid, diethylamide, psilocybin, obtained from mushroom, and mescaline. So meaning class, hallucinogens are a class of drugs that cause profound distortions in a person's perception of reality otherwise known as hallucinations. While under the influence of hallucinogens, user might see images, hear sounds, or feel sensation that seem to be real but errant. Almost all hallucinogens contain nitrogen and are classified as alkaloids. Many hallucinogens have chemical structures similar to those of natural neurotransmitters. The most commonly used hallucinogens are First is ayahuasca, sometimes called huasca, aya, and yage. Ayahuasca is brewed from the plants containing DMT, along with Amazonian vine that prevents the normal breakdown of DMT in the digestive system. It is usually consumed like tea. Next is DMT or dimethyltryptamine, also known as Dimitri, is a natural chemical found in some Amazonian plant species, but it can also be chemically synthesized. It usually comes as white, crystalline powder 
that is vaporized or smoked in a pipe or box. Next one is LSD or dilysergic acid diethylamide LSD is a man-made chemical made from ergot. A fungus that grows on certain grains, it is probably the most powerful hallucinogen available. Producing hallucinations, changes in the way reality is perceived, and altered moods. Another is marijuana. The active ingredient in marijuana is delta tetrahydrocannabinol or THC which acts on the cannabinoid receptors found in brain regions that influence learning, memory, appetite, coordination, and pleasure. So what are the three examples of use hallucinogens? Yes, very good! Next is inhalants. Found in ordinary household chemical products in anesthetics readily available and accessible to young children. Inhalant toxins are similar to those of alcohol. The only difference is the poor smell. Abuse can lead to delusions, brain damage, liver damage, comatose and death. Example are acetone, rugby, solvent, spray pens, cleaning fluids, and air conditioner fluid spray on. First of all, let's thank God the Almighty who has been giving us His mercies and blessings uh, because we finish our topic peacefully. But before we end this topic, uh, I would like to share to you guys, my students, why you should not use drugs that is not prescribed by your doctors. Uh, nowadays, drugs are getting available illegally uh, in some areas of this country. It, but it is not surprising that these drugs, these drug users, is continue increasing year by year drug is really a threat to this world drug is really terribly dangerous threat to our neighbors our friends especially our family a drug is any substance other than food that when inhaled injected smoke a consume observe via a patch in our skins it dissolves under the tongue that uh, causes physiological changes in our body. Okay class, I will give you uh, 10 minutes to read all of your notes, then we'll be having a quiz. So this is only a 10 items, so I hope you'll answer it correctly. Time is up, set aside now your notes and uh, form a one sheet of part lineup and prepare a one two sheet of paper. Okay class, time is up. So Ms. Secretary, please collect all the papers. Thank you. And assignment, uh, make a slogan that is related to our topic. Oh, the theme is uh, don't do drugs. So make it uh, meaningful, make it beautiful, make it colorful. Do it in a short one paper. Okay, thank you. Class, please stand up. Let's pray before we separate wings. Let's bow our heads. Okay, thank you for listening, my students. Uh, you can go home now, except for the cleaners. Uh, make this clean, make this pleasant. Uh, okay, I hope you learned a lot. See you tomorrow. Have a nice day. Thank you.